introduction historical linguistics if you look at these lines can you read them it's english but not the recent english or present english obviously it's from the old english these lines were from the lord's prayer some 1000 years ago it means that if these lines are from english language uh, the, they are very different from the English we use in the present. So, it means that there has been a lot of change in this 100, uh, 1000 year. So, language changes with the passage of time. So, investigation of the features of old, older language, languages and the way in which they develop into modern languages involved using the study of language and change also known as philology also called diachronic linguistics so if we look at the language and we study them in different eras different times so we find that they are they were different in different periods of time so this the sub these uh, the subject that study is this aspect of language change is philology, right? And it's no, it is not synchronic uh, study of uh, language, rather it is diachronic study. I mean, studying language in its chronological uh, su succession. In the 19th century, phil philology dominated the study of language and one result was the creation of family trees to show how language were related so what philology did is that it studied languages found in different eras in different parts of the world and try to uh, form language trees that how different languages spoken by different people belong to same languages so different languages trees were made on the basis of this development that how one language was spoken in different areas in different uh, different parts of the world belong to a certain uh, single source principal concerns of historical linguistics include to describe and account for observed changes in particular languages so it would look at the changes in a certain language Obviously, the phonological changes, the uh, syntactic changes, the morphological changes. So, it would tell that how in different periods of, the, uh, of history, certain changes have taken place. To reconstruct the pre-history of languages and to determine their relatedness, grouping them into language families. So, it was reconstructed how the old Old, sam old samples of the language were taken and then a language was reconstructed uh, to determine that how different languages are related on the basis of the features found in the languages and uh, this aspect or uh, this task was known as comparative linguistics to develop general theory about how and why language changes so it also meant to uh, develop a theory that why language changes do the changes on the basis of geographical distances or class distances so uh, this help us uh, in knowing the reasons of change in a language or languages to describe the history of speech communities that which people in different parts of the world use that language so this was known uh, known to us by uh, this was told to us by historical linguistics and to study the history of words that how words have come for example if you look up words in a dictionary you find that this word belong to latin language or greek language or french language or many other languages so this aspect of the uh, knowledge of word is known as etymology so uh, in historical linguistics we other than, uh, we, other other than other things we also discuss their etymology the their main source where from the source they have uh, been coined from different languages they have been coined 
So, in historical linguistics, uh, we study different families of the language, different sources of the language, and we look at the reasons for change, how languages have, have been changed, how they came from single source or different sources, and uh, what people use those languages.